Hello, and welcome to our video presentation on traumatic brain injuries, or TBIs. We hope you find this information helpful. Today, we will be discussing the following. What is a traumatic brain injury? Types of TBIs, risk factors for TBIs, causes of TBIs, signs and symptoms of a TBI, diagnosing and treating TBIs, preventing TBIs, and caring for someone with a TBI. So what is a traumatic brain injury? A TBI can be caused by a forceful bump, blow, or jolt to the head or body, or from an object that pierces the skull and enters the brain. However, not all blows or jolts to the head result in a TBI. Some types of TBIs can cause temporary or short-term problems. More serious TBIs can cause severe to permanent disability or death. Next, let's discuss the different types of TBIs. A penetrating TBI is also known as an open TBI. This occurs when an object pierces the skull and enters brain tissue. This typically only damages part of the brain. A non-penetrating TBI is also known as a closed head injury or blunt TBI. This type of TBI is caused by an external force strong enough to move the brain within the skull. The causes of this type of TBI typically include falls, motor vehicle crashes, sports injuries, blast injuries, or being struck by an object. A mild concussion is the most common type of TBI. This type includes brief alterations of consciousness or loss of consciousness for less than 30 minutes. A moderate TBI includes loss of consciousness for over 30 minutes, but less than one day. However, confusion can last a week. A severe TBI includes loss of consciousness for more than one full day. This type of TBI is typically associated with changes on a head CT or brain MRI. In an uncomplicated TBI, the head CT slash brain MRI are normal. In a complicated TBI, the head CT or brain MRI show changes such as bleeding. A non-traumatic TBI is also known as a hypoxic slash anoxic brain injury. This type of TBI can result from strokes, seizures, choking, and near fatal drowning, which can deprive brain of oxygen. The following are some of the risk factors for TBIs. The first are children, newborn to four years old. The next are young adults, ages 15 to 24. Adults, ages 60 and older. Males in any age group and people involved in certain professions or activities, such as athletes, construction workers, military service members, and police. Next, let's discuss some of the causes of TBIs. Falls are the most common cause of TBIs. Falls occur most frequently between young and old age groups. Blunt trauma accidents involve being struck by or against an object. They are usually sports-related injuries. Vehicle-related injuries are caused by pedestrian-involved accidents or accidents involving vehicles and bicycles. Assaults slash violent assaults cause head injuries, which are the result of domestic violence, shaken baby syndrome, or gunshot wounds to the head. Explosions slash blasts are another cause of TBIs. Blast trauma from roadside bombs are common injuries to military service members in conflicts. 
The following are some of the physical signs and symptoms of TBIs. Headache, convulsions or seizures, blurred or double vision, unequal eye pupil size or dilation, clear fluids draining from the nose or ears, nausea or vomiting, and new neurologic deficit such as slurred speech, loss of balance, and weakness of arms, legs, or face. On this slide are some of the cognitive slash behavioral signs and symptoms of TBIs. Loss of or change in consciousness, anywhere from a few seconds to a few hours, decreased level of consciousness, mild to profound confusion or disorientation, problems remembering, concentrating or making decisions, changes in sleep patterns such as sleeping more, difficulty falling or staying asleep, and inability to awaken from sleep, and frustration or irritability. On this slide are some of the perception slash sensation signs and symptoms of TBIs. These symptoms include lightheadedness, dizziness, vertigo, or loss of balance or coordination, blurred vision, hearing problems such as ringing in ears, bad taste in the mouth, sensitivity to light or sound, mood changes or swings such as agitation, combativeness, or other unusual behavior, feeling anxious or depressed, and fatigue or drowsiness, a lack of energy or motivation. Next, we will discuss TBI effects on consciousness. A minimally conscious state refers to a person in a severely altered consciousness who still displays some evidence of self-awareness or awareness of their environment. In a vegetative state, a person is unconscious and unaware of their surroundings. They can have periods of unresponsive alertness, and this state is a result of widespread damage to the brain. In a coma, a person is unconscious, unaware, and unable to respond to external stimuli. A coma usually lasts a few days or weeks then the person may either regain consciousness, die, or move to a vegetative state. Brain death includes a lack of measurable brain function and activity after an extended period of time. Brain death may be confirmed by studies that show no blood flow to the brain. On this slide, we will discuss how TBIs are diagnosed. TBIs may be diagnosed by a neurological evaluation. In a neurological evaluation, a neurologist will check memory, thinking, motor function, and sensory functions. TBIs may also be diagnosed by imaging tests in which a CT scan or MRI will check the brain for swelling and bleeding. A blood test may also be used to diagnose a TBI. The Banyan Trauma Indicator, or BTI, will look for proteins in the blood that indicate a mild TBI or concussion. The Glasgow Coma Scale is the most widely used tool for assessing the level of consciousness after a TBI. This is a 15 point test which measures a person's ability to open their eyes and respond to spoken questions of physical prompts for movement. The Acute Concussion Evaluation, or ACE, is a systematic way to assess a person who has suffered a mild TBI. This evaluation tracks symptom recovery over time. Reviewers collect information about the injury, the presence of amnesia and or seizures, 
and the presence of physical, cognitive, emotional, and sleep-related symptoms. This evaluation also accounts for risk factors that may impact how long it takes to recover from the TBI. Next, we will discuss how to treat TBIs. For mild to moderate TBIs, care may involve short periods of rest from sports, school, or work. Symptoms should improve within a few weeks. Treatment should focus on symptom relief and brain rest. Pay attention to any new symptoms and follow up with a healthcare provider. For severe TBIs, immediate treatment focuses on preventing death, stabilizing the spinal cord, heart, lung, and vital organ functions, ensuring proper oxygen delivery and breathing, controlling blood pressure, and preventing further brain damage. Surgery may be needed for emergency medical care and to treat secondary damage. Some people require tube feeding to maintain proper balance of nutrients. Counseling may also be used to treat TBIs. Counseling may be used for emotional support. Many people experience stress and worries about their recovery. Surgery may also be used to treat bleeding in the brain or reduce pressure from brain swelling. Rehabilitation includes physical, occupational, and speech therapy. A person may need to rest for one to two days before returning to normal activities. More severe injuries may require longer rest periods. If a person rests too long after a mild head injury, then they may have more difficulty resuming normal activities. Returning to normal activities too soon after a severe injury may make symptoms worse. A person should speak with their doctor regarding recommendations for returning to normal activities. Let's now discuss how to prevent TBIs. In order to prevent a TBI, a person should always wear a seatbelt in a motor vehicle. Don't drive under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Wear a helmet while riding a bicycle, skateboard, motorcycle, snowboard, or all-terrain vehicle, and wear appropriate head protection during contact sports. Pay attention to surroundings. Don't drive, walk, or cross the street while distracted. In order to prevent falls, which may cause TBIs, keep the floors clear of clutter. Install handrails in bathrooms and both sides of staircases. Improve lighting in the home and receive regular vision checkups. Next, let's talk about caring for someone with a TBI. First, keep things organized. Try using lists or calendars to organize daily tasks. Also, give one direction at a time. Next, maintain routines. Keep day-to-day -day lives for the residents as consistent as possible. Also, be patient. Allow the resident time to complete tasks. And finally, be sensitive to fatigue. If the resident becomes tired or overwhelmed, suggest they take a break. On this slide are some resources so that you can learn more about traumatic brain injuries. Thank you for watching our video presentation on traumatic brain injuries. As always, resident safety is our top priority.